doing everybody? Hope everybody's doing good today because I am because I'm on another project and that project consists of my boat again, right? If you haven't seen my channel yet, I'm working on a 1987 Marinette 32 sedan flybridge. Basically, I'm renovating it. Um, I'm taking most of the interior and redoing it and getting it up to par to make it look newer again and just bringing the old girl back to life. So if you want to check out my Jeep Man King channel, you'll see all the videos. I have many, many videos on the Marinette. So we got that boat about 11 months ago and over the winter did a lot of interior work and now it's springtime and we've been doing a, a few trips with it already and I'm changing up some things. And what am I changing up? Well, I'm putting in a Predator 3500 generator slash inverter. And the reason I'm doing that is because the fact that the Predator generator gets so much better efficiency on fuel. So it's a gas engine. And on my 32 Marinette, I do have a Wester Peak 8.5 kW. It is a marine generator. It's a little four cylinder, but there's a couple issues. Number one, the thing runs fantastic. <laughs> it really does. It hums like a sewing machine and it is great. The only downfall with it is it uses more gas than what I like. It's not that it needs a tune up. It's just for that size of a generator, I just don't need anything that big for my boat, okay? So that's the number one thing. It uses at full capacity, it uses 1.1 gallons per hour. So that means if it's putting out close to the 8.5 kW, it's gonna be cranking out and consuming about 1.1 gallon of gas per hour. We have never run it at max capacity. So I'm just guessing it's, you know, we're, if even if we're running at 50% capacity, it's still using three quarters of a gallon an hour. Um, that's not a big deal either, but with this Predator 3500 KW, I'm able to run in eco mode, two and a half gallons, almost 12 hours. As you can see, there is a huge difference. So for me, everything's about efficiency. How can I make something run better, be more efficient? I don't need a generator that big. So with that, I know that I can make do with a 3500 KW generator. And since it uses very little gas to operate on, that's exactly what I'm looking for because I'm on a boat, right? I've got gas in my tanks. I've got two 75 gallon gas tanks. And if I've got a marine generator that uses eight hours, it's gonna be eight gallons. Well, I can run this 12 hours, 11 to 12 hours on two and a half gallons. So huge difference. And then if you look down the long run, it's gonna save me a ton of money. So let's check it out what's going on today. So first of all, I've got my generator up on my flybridge. And what I'm doing is making an extension cord that's going to go from my generator on my flybridge down to where my shore power hooks into my boat. So I've got two 30 amp um, twist lock uh, connections there on the side of my boat. That's where the shore power comes in and feeds my boat. So what I'm doing is I'm making an extension cord to go from my generator down to those sockets, outlets, all right? And then I've got a splitter there that's actually gonna split it and bring it into uh, one wire. So the first thing I've got is, if you're gonna do this, you're gonna need a 10-3. So that's a 10 gauge, and there's three, there's three wires within the actual loop, okay? And I'm just here is 20 feet long. So um, I shopped around and uh, I don't get any paid advertisements, so I just tell you where I get stuff and uh, I tell you what I think of items. But I got this at Lowe's. Um, Lowe's was the cheapest place that I could find and I really like Lowe's. And uh, if you're a veteran out there, thank you for your service for our country. Um, I served in the US Coast Guard for four years and I tell you what, Lowe's is pretty cool because number one, they do give the veteran discount if you ask for it. Sign up on a My Lowe's veteran and uh, 
you can get a, a 10% discount on just about everything except the appliances. I think appliances is the only thing that you don't get 10% on. So um, if you go to my channel, I built a cottage and most of my building materials I got from Lowe's because I got a 10% uh, discount being a veteran. But anyhow, that's not exactly the whole thing, but what's nice is if you pull into a Lowe's parking lot up front, They'll have in Paducah, Kentucky, that's my closest Lowe's that I go to. There's a couple signs there that says veteran parking. So what's really cool, not only do they honor the veterans by giving them a 10% off a year round, they actually provide a parking space up front. So hats off to Lowe's, appreciate them. And thanks for doing what they do to help out just a little bit for us veterans. So, and if you are a veteran, why don't you put down in the comments what branch that you served in. It's always kind of cool to see what people are, or who's watching my channel. And uh, I like to know your background because it, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, you guys may, you guys ask me a lot of questions on my comments and I kind of answer the best I can. And uh, I just like to know what my viewers are actually watching my channel. That's, that's what I like to know. Kind of gives me some heads up on who uh, who enjoys the channel so anyhow um so this is what it looks like it's just a flexible um it's got a really thick insulation around it and uh it's a 10 gauge and it's going to be very easy to make extension cord out of all right first thing that you're going to need is your wire of course but then the second thing that you're going to need is the right connectors on the ends is this right here is a twist lock and on here they do have some edges to where this is what's going to actually go into the predator generator it goes in and twist and it'll lock in place that way it's secure and you don't have to worry about it the, the twist lock number that you're going to need number one this is a 30 amp 125 volt uh, plug and it's going to be an L5-30P that's what you're looking for when you go to the store um, when you buy this so it's real important the other thing that you're going to need is the part that goes on the boat okay and this right here like I got both these items on Amazon so I'll put those down in the description in a link then that way you can check them out yourself um, it's basically this is a, a 50 amp plug and it's uh, SS2 dash 50 R SS2 dash 50 R connector and that's what you're gonna need to this is gonna plug into my pigtail so that I can feed both 30 amp outlets. And the way my boat is set up, I've got 30 amp that feeds the port side and 30 amp that feeds the other side. So um, it's gonna be pretty easy to do. And it does have the, the, the screw on. Not only does it have a twist lock, but it also has a weather tight pack here that's gonna work. So um, anyhow, we're gonna get started on this. and. Uh, see what we can do here so first of all it comes apart pretty simple you got some screws right here that you'll take apart the reason why this is a marine is because if you see on the outside here you got a, a grounding tip that's uh, for extra protection right there so it is for uh, marine I think you can also it, it'll work for an RV too but for this one here, it's just a little bit safer than your regular twist lock. And then everything comes apart right there. So we'll feed it all through there backwards. And as you can see, we've just got connectors you've got some nice flathead screws that tell you which 
colored wire actually goes in there as well. So we'll get them screwed down and uh, looking pretty good here. So. First of all, you want to peel back just enough insulation. I'm going to go ahead and take it back a little bit further than what I need. And what I'm going to do is basically, once I get it cut off where I need, then I can do the final trimming. And you just, just slide off your little piece there and get that all taken care of. And you come in here where all your insulation is, you'll just simply cut that off. Nice and flush with everything. And when you trim that insulation off, make sure you don't penetrate and actually get into your wire insulation because that's truly what's insulating everything else is you're making your extension cord. do a little test fit here see all this all gonna work out and inscribed on this they got some little lines there that you can follow to actually cut that open get it where you need to be. So we'll go up to the first line, see what that does for us. Hopefully we won't cut too much off. Get you a nice little razor blade, nice and tight, and you should be just fine. So you just slide that down Get that out of the way and then we'll come back we'll take our other piece here and it's got a weather pack as well there's actually a, a rubber sleeve there that you're going to get another level of protection there as well Let's slide that down and then we'll come in here and see where we're going to be at right here so you see we're going to have to cut some of these off All right, so you'll strip off your ends. Once again, just trim off what you think you need. You can always take more insulation off. As you guys can see there, it's a Cummins 4BT. It's a 3.9 liter diesel engine. Um, I'm getting ready to put a, an injection pump on it and hopefully get it running here pretty soon. I did do a uh, partial rebuild on that. Um, I didn't have the head sent out, but I did uh, put new rod and main bearings in it, put all new uh, uh, gaskets on it and to get it where it needs to be. And uh, it was actually, extremely good condition. The uh, crankshaft journals were excellent. Rod bearings and main bearings were excellent. Um, the guy I bought it from said it had about 50,000 miles on it. Um, I don't know, but I went ahead and just did a partial rebuild on it. That way it's 100% uh, good to go. So uh, 
you will be finishing it up here pretty soon. Uh, whenever you get your wires cut and trimmed where you need them to be, make sure you use some dielectric grease. It's just a, uh, it's a grease that actually protects and will prevent corrosion on dissimilar metals. You can use it on battery terminal or whatever you need to, like this. We've got some copper in here. So all we're doing is just making sure that we, we don't want any corrosion once we hook this up. And you just simply just wipe it over everything, work it into the, the wire material. And then also go to your plug and go ahead and put some down in there so that it will keep it from corroding in there as well. Pull the trigger, put some in there, and you're good to go. And what we'll do, we'll go through here and we'll start hooking her up. When you start to tighten it up, just make sure that the wire is in there and not the insulation when you go to tighten this down. Because if the insulation's in there, then you're just crimping down on the insulation and not actually grabbing the wire. So make sure you just take your time with it. That way you don't have to go back and ensures that you've got really good connection there. As you can see, you don't have much room here to get all your wires in there correctly. So it's because you don't want too much of your lead showing when you're doing that. Because you want it to, to be protected It'd be okay. Really snug them up good. All right. And what we'll do? What this is gonna do? This is gonna cinch down on your cord, and it'll. Somebody was to ever just grab your cord, it'll prevent it from just putting all the stress on your socket. So we've got that tightened down, cinched down on your cord just like that. Next part, this right here. So we'll put this on. up with them screw holes and then we'll get these screwed in and I'm not for sure since I've got 20 feet of cord here I'm not for sure if I'm going to be keeping all of it once I actually get it stationary and I get my generator where I want it because I may build a little uh, cabinet for it as well and uh, I may actually cut some of it off. But anyhow, that's that there. You've got a nice twist lock connection and then also a weatherproof connection. So that's gonna be real handy. And uh, we'll get started on the other end. Same process, just take your cord. This one here is a little bit smaller. So just kind of guesstimate where you're gonna need it at. And uh, we'll get it trimmed off here. Uh, dielectric die grease if you guys haven't already um, I use it on my boat a bunch I uh, use it for my batteries uh, use it for any connections that might come in contact <clears throat> with some just moisture um, especially if it's uh, 
say you're dealing with aluminum and then you're dealing with copper like this or steel, when you have two dissimilar metals, it will actually cause a corrosion. Always use some dielectric grease just to be on the safe side. It's extremely cheap. I get mine on Amazon. Uh, it actually comes in this nice little pressurized tube with a little trigger you pull and it'll squeeze out. It's really nice. Um, I have had some in a tube. You pick it up any, uh, you can go to Lowe's or any type of hardware store, go to the electrical uh, section and you'll see some uh, dielectric grease in there as well. So you can get it just about anywhere. And if you're not really comfortable with electricity, it's, just remember, always use a multimeter to ensure that you're working around a power source that is disconnected, okay? Never ever take a chance. That's, and if you don't know what you're doing, my suggestion is go find somebody that does, okay? Because you can run into a, an issue and it, it could cost you your life, okay? But if you want to learn, like I've learned, just ask for help. That's all you have to do. Just ask for help. It's just that simple. They got some really cool meters out now that pretty much dummy proof to see whether or not your power source is live and uh, makes it really easy. So anyhow, All right, so let's, once again, we'll fill these little tubes up with some dielectric grease. If you watch my channel and you're working on a boat project or you're just working on a cool project, put it down in the comments. I'd like to know what everybody's working on <laughs> and what they like to do as a hobby. So it's pretty cool and it's, if you've got a YouTube channel that you're doing something that's cool, put it down in the comments. I'll check you out. But if you're a subscriber of mine or, or not, and you got a question to ask me, you can send an email to me direct, or you put it in the comments. And my email address is going to be jeepmanking at gmail.com. And I'll see if I can help you out with whatever your question is. So we're almost there. Got the final connection here. Just make sure you get your screws nice and tight on these. That way you don't have to worry about them coming out. Right. Let's slide this connector up. Loosen it back up a little bit. Line back up with the holes here. We'll do the final screw. that actually connects those two together. And just remember, this is a 30 amp plug. Um, if you look on your generator, it'll tell you what the, sometimes you'll have two or three plugs on there. And if you do, just remember that you always want to hook up to the biggest one to make sure that everything is good and that you're not having any issues. Um, my biggest plug on this generator is a 30 amp plug. So make sure you get a twist lock that's a 30. I think there's some out there with some, a 15. 
uh, but you don't want to do that. Uh, my generator max uh, output is 25 amps. So by having a 30 amp plug, a cord that can handle 30 amps, you are gonna be well within the power range because the generator only puts out 25 amps. So um, that way you're safe. So anyhow guys, this is it. I've got, I'm gonna get all this taken care of, but I got a 20 foot extension cord for my boat and this will plug into my generator and this will plug into my boat and that way I'll have power. Now, the only thing is with this generator, 3500 uh, kW, say I'm gonna turn on my coffee maker and the air conditioner and maybe a toaster, if you're gonna use a toaster or a hair dryer, you may not be able to turn it all on at one time. Um, that's maybe just a tad bit of a downfall, but all in all, I won't be doing all of those three at one time anyway. So if you have to, you may just have to limit one power uh, unit so you don't go over your 3500 kW. So what's really cool with this Predator 3500, it'll actually show the actual amperage and the wattage so uh, on a digital screen. So if I plug in my coffee maker, it'll tell me exactly how many amps it's pulling. And then if I plug in my toaster, it'll double that, it'll actually add that, and I can see my max amperage that I'm pulling off of my generator. And once I hook this up, I'll be able to tell exactly what I can run anytime on this 3500 kW without tripping it. But uh, all in all, it's gonna be great for what I need. And I've got a good, good cord now to do what I need to do. And it's gonna really help me out. So uh, we'll finish up this project. Once I get this plugged in, we'll get it fired up. And uh, that'll be next. All right. So this is where I'm at. This is the uh, little pigtail. This is a 230 amp plugs. And this is a, a 50 amp plug right here. And this is my generator cord that you guys saw me make. And we're gonna get this thing here plugged together. Twist lock, make sure it's all good and tight, which it is. Make sure your power's off of your shore power. It is the female end, so you don't have to worry about getting shocked there, but I always just get in the habit of turning shore power off. That way when we're not here, that the cord gets knocked in the water, you don't have to worry about it being uh, powered up with uh, voltage. So that way you're always safe. So, Cause I can see it happening. All right, get them out of the way. Everybody's wondering, this is cable. Um, our marina does have cable. So um, I do have a cable hookup that goes to our TV inside, which is kind of cool. Uh, especially if you don't actually go out underway, especially in the winter months when you just come down and hang out on the boat. Pretty nice. All right. And for here, it doesn't matter which ones it goes to. To help with guessing as you can see it only go on there one way so once i get this hooked up i'm going to take a permanent marker and mark it that way i know i don't have to sit there and hunt for it every time i get ready to hook these up so Okay, so we've got everything hooked together. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
take all of our excess cord that we have here and just temporarily I'm gonna run it up and hook it up to the generator so let's go do that I guess you guys have been up here on top yet. Yeah, this is the old fly bridge up here. Got some cobwebs already since the last time we've been here. Yeah. Anyhow, seats are covered. I do got a little table that goes up there. The side of that cobweb, that thing's huge. All right, now, down the business. All right, those are the cushions that go up on the bow. Up there, I can't see it, but there's a sitting area that goes all the way across. And I keep them stored up here because we have had some major storms roll through here. And uh, it's nice and protected there. Don't have to worry about them blowing them off in the water, which is a big plus. All right, so here, we have the printer 3500 generator, and this is not where it's gonna go. I think it's gonna be going right here. I'm gonna actually be building um, a little platform for that to sit up on, and the reason is because the exhaust is right here. So I'm gonna build it up high enough so this exhaust will clear and shoot straight out. But at the same time, let me zoom out here. So it's going to go right there um, and then I'm going to make a little cabinet that's underneath this to keep a few supplies in for up here on the flybridge and it should be good to go. I do have these little um, neoprene pieces underneath the wheels. Number one just to make sure that it's not scuffing the paint but also um, it does help with the vibration just a little bit more so that's a big plus there. So. All right, so here's the fuel on it. This is how you fill it up. Um, so for right now, I'm just going to grab this cord. And we're just going to temporarily um, plug it into this generator. I want to make sure everything's working before I start designing the little platform that we're going to need. So hang tight. All right. So on this generator you got you a, a 30 amp plug and uh, two regular 120s here you have a dc 12 volt it's got a special plug the generator does come with that plug along with a couple clamps that's on the end of a wire that way you can charge up a 12 volt battery just by plugging it in there it does it for you it's got a breaker here a breaker here and a breaker right there and um, has the maximum uh, starting watts at 3,500 and has running watts at 3,000. So once you get everything up and going, as long as you don't exceed that, you should be good. Um, it does have an hour meter on it. It's got voltage on it. It's got everything on it, which is really nice. Um, you do have a couple of ports right here for, um, you can actually run two 3,500 watt generators together with the right cord and you're all set. Right here you have your eco mode on and off. I run it on on all the time. You do have electric start right here, which is really nice. Super nice, I love it. You've got an, your off switch, your run switch, and your start switch, which is basically choke, all right? Now, you do have a fuel gauge right here which is really nice and easy visible you've also got a pull start and let me tell you this thing pulls very very easily so it can't beat that so let's get this thing plugged in um once again put some dielectric grease on that that way especially in this environment that i'm in you won't have to worry about uh, yourself getting any corrosion in there remember to twist it and lock it in place you're good to go all right so let's start this bad boy up. I always like to put it on run just for a second. All I'm doing is circulating the engine oil in there. I'm gonna put it to start. That's 
basically all that the amperage at the cord is pulling right now. The only thing I have on down there is my uh, charger for my batteries. So very little. This is uh, the amps. This is how much this unit is putting out. Right now it's putting out 223 amps. And we got 29 hours on it so far. That's just a runtime of it gives by the minute. Every time you every time you start this, it will start a new clock, and it'll you know exactly how many hours this will run on a tank of fuel if you need to. So one more little cool thing there. So it's pretty neat. So we'll put it back over here. We'll go down and check things out. As you see, it's very quiet. Very nice. So let's go back now. Make sure everything is good. get the generator hooked up it does uh, power everything up on the boat it's up there and uh, this is gonna be my feed wire right here like I said I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with it yet or where my generator is gonna sit for sure up there but this is probably gonna feed some more right in through here and then it's gonna go along this bulkhead and I'm gonna attach it with some nice uh, fasteners there with some uh, rubber clamps and uh, it's gonna feed straight down and then be ready to get hooked in right there. Um, so anyhow, generator's fired up, ready to go. That way we're able to uh, use the cheaper one. <laughs> we get a lot more fuel efficiency versus the great big one down here. So no worries there. Uh, good thing is, got it all figured out. It's all hooked up, ready to roll. And um, so that project's done. And now I'm just going to go up there and figure out exactly where I'm going to put it at. Those are coming out for sure. And I'm going to build me a nice little uh, platform that goes up a little bit. It's going to lock in all the wheels and then have a little bit of storage underneath that as well for maybe, uh, maybe a couple quarts of oil for that generator. And uh, maybe some odds, odds and ends. And maybe... Actually, when I'm not using the cord, I'll probably just roll it up and then store it underneath in that cabinet that sits underneath there. So that's going to be another project for you guys. And uh, thanks for coming along today. I appreciate it. So God bless you guys. And we got one more project done and a few more to go. That's for sure. So God bless y'all. We'll see you soon with boat projects and a little bit of everything else. See you later. Bye.